Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States and the First Lady. House. I'm so grateful that all of you have been able to join us in one of the very greatest parts of the President's responsibilities. It is such a pleasure and an honor to welcome you as we honor these great Americans. We are also pleased that members of the Cabinet the administration, and the Congress are with us. Secretary of Labor, Bob Reich. Secretary of the Treasury, Lloyd Benson. Secretary of Health and Human Services, Donna Shalala. Secretary of Transportation, Pena. Administrator Bowles and Duffy and Carol Bellamy. Ambassador Cantor. And from the Congress, Senator Kennedy and Speaker Foley. Congressman Chris Shays, Congressman Joe Kennedy, Congressman J.J. Pickle, and others who have been able as well to join us this afternoon. There is no greater honor that can be given to a civilian American than the Presidential Medal of Freedom, and there is no greater pleasure and honor that this President has than to be able to make such an award. And the men and women that we honor today, each in his and her own way, have made a contribution to the life of our country and have done so with enthusiasm and energy, with a lack of cynicism, with a great deal of hope about how our country is working and will work for the betterment of its citizens. And so it is a special pleasure to be able to take a moment out to honor people who have given so much of themselves. And I hope you will, as we have in thinking about and anticipating this day, take away not only a very special sense of how these people have contributed, but also a new sense of obligation and hopefulness about what each of us may be able to contribute in our own ways. I hope now that you have been able to gather that you will join us as we honor these men and women. And for that purpose, it is my great honor to introduce our president, Bill Clinton. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the White House. As you might imagine, one of the great pleasures of the presidency is selecting recipients of the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the highest honor given to civilians by the United States of America. If I might begin on a very personal and immediate note. Last fall, this annual ceremony was held on a very happy day for me and for those of us who want a safer and more humane United States. It was the day we made the Brady Bill the law of the land. Today, as we gather here, Congress is on the verge of voting on the most comprehensive anti-crime bill in history. But that bill has been held hostage for 11 days by certain special interest groups. So as we recognize 
the contributions of civilians to our country's way of life. I'd like to take this opportunity to call on those groups who are blocking the crime bill to let it come to a vote and ask the other citizens of the United States to ask the Congress for the same thing. Many people we honor here today have given their whole lives to enriching the fabric of the future, and we can do no less. This afternoon, we will present the Presidential Medal of Freedom to nine remarkable individuals whose service to our democracy and to humanity has advanced the common interest of freedom-loving people, not only here at home, but throughout the world. Herbert Block, the late Cesar Chavez, Arthur Fleming, Dorothy Height, Barbara Jordan, Lane Kirkland, Robert Michael, and Sergeant Shriver. The medals these Americans received today has a special history. It was established by President Truman in 1945, at first to reward notable service in the war. In 1963, President Kennedy amended the award for distinguished civilian service in peacetime. The honorees that year included the singer Marian Anderson, Justice Felix Frankfurt, diplomat John McCloy, labor leader George Meany, the writer E.B. White, playwright Thornton Wilder, and the artist Andrew Wyeth. By the time that first ceremony was held here in the White House in December of 1963, President Johnson had added to the role of names of President Kennedy and His Holiness John Paul, Paul the 20, Pope John the 23rd. Listen to this. At that time, Under Secretary of State George Ball said that the President is establishing what we can proudly call an American civil honors list. How many of our greatest citizens who went on to achieve other things said that the greatest thing that could ever be said about them was that they were good citizens? That is true in every way of those we honor today. Herbert Block, or Herb Block as we know him, became an editorial cartoonist with the Chicago Daily News in 1929. Not a very good year to begin writing funny cartoons. His long and prolific career has spanned the presidencies of 11 different presidents. The fact that he gets to choose the targets in cartoons may have something to do with the longevity of his career. His cartoons have appeared in the Washington Post since 1946, the year I was born. <laughs> he educates and persuades public opinion with effectiveness, artistry, warmth, and great good humor. He has a big heart. He sides with a little guy, people of common sense, and all who hold a healthy irreverence for any sort of pretensions. Cesar Chavez, before his death in April of last year, had become a champion of working people everywhere. Born into Depression-era poverty in Arizona in 1927, he served in the United States Navy in the Second World War and rose to become one of our greatest advocates of nonviolent change. He was, for his own people, a Moses figure. The farm workers who labored in the fields and yearned for respect and self-sufficiency pinned their hopes on this remarkable man who, with faith and discipline, with soft smoke and humility, and amazing inner strength, led a very courageous life, and in so doing brought dignity to the lives of so many others and provided us for inspiration for the, re for the rest of our nation's history. We are honored to have his wife, friend, and longtime working partner, Helen Chavez, 
to be with us today to receive the award. Arthur Fleming served every president from Franklin Roosevelt to Ronald Reagan as the Republican member of the Civil Service Commission, as a member of the Hoover Commission on the Executive Branch established by President Truman, as Director of Defense Mobilization and a member of President Eisenhower's National Security Council, and as Secretary of Health, Education, and Welfare. In addition to being an able administrator, Dr. Fleming is also a respected educator and former journalist. Over the course of his long and eminent career in public service, he contributed to the struggles for Social Security, civil rights, and most recently, health care reform, something for which the First Lady and I are particularly in his debt. These three struggles he calls the greatest domestic crusades of his lifetime. James Grant is the remarkable executive director of the United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, where he has tirelessly waged a global crusade on behalf of the world's children. Like his father before him, he was born and raised in China, where he took up his family's tradition of offering assistance abroad and first went to work for the United Nations at the end of World War II. In the fall of 1992, he helped to broker a brief ceasefire during the siege of Sarajevo and personally directed the safe passage of a convoy carrying winter supplies of clothing, blankets, and food. As the international community's guardian of innocent children in troubled regions, he oversees the delivery of humanitarian assistance that without him might otherwise never reach those in need. Dorothy Height is one of the world's most tireless and accomplished advocates of civil rights, the rights of women, and the health and stability of family and community life. From the days when she helped Eleanor Roosevelt to organize the World Youth Conference in 1938, she has remained engaged in the public arena for 60 years and more. As a leader of the National Council of Negro Women and the Young Women's Christian Association, She's been a powerful voice for equal opportunity here and in developing nations around the world. In recent years, her black family reunion celebrations have reminded our society that self-help and self-reliance within loving, extended families are the dominant cultural traditions of the African-American community. For 20 years, Barbara Jordan has been the most outspoken moral voice of the American political system, a position she reached soon after becoming the first black congresswoman elected from the deep south from her native Texas in 1972. From national platforms, she has captured the nation's attention and awakened its conscience in defense of our Constitution, the American dream, and the commonality we share as American citizens. As professor of ethics and public policy at the Lyndon B. Johnson School of Public Affairs, she ensures that the next generation of our public servants will be worthy of the legacy she has done so much to build. Lane Kirkland has been at the center of the American labor movement for almost 50 years. After serving in the Merchant Marine during the Second World War and his subsequent graduation from the School of Foreign Service, at Georgetown University. He became a researcher for organized labor in the same year that he worked as a 26-year-old speechwriter in the 1948 campaign of Harry Truman and his running mate, Albin Barkley. Throughout the Cold War, when some leaders saw only the threats to our freedom overseas and neglected the barriers to freedom and inequality within our own land, Kirkland showed America that you can stand up to communism abroad just as forcefully as you can stand up for working men and women here at home. As president of the AFL-CIO for the last 15 years, he has helped to teach us that solidarity is a powerful word in any language and that a vibrant labor movement is essential to every free society. Robert Michael has served in the United States House of Representatives since 1957. That is the second longest tenure of any Republican 
in American history. As minority leader in the House for the last 13 years, he has served his party well, but he has also served our nation well. Choosing the pragmatic but harder course of conciliation more often than the divisive but easier course of confrontation. In the best sense, he is a gentleman legislator who, in spite of the great swings in public opinion from year to year, has remained always true to the Midwestern values he represents so faithfully in the House. He retires at the end of this year, generally regarded by Democrats and Republicans alike as one of the most decent and respected leaders with which any president has had the privilege to work. Sergeant Shriver is the man who launched the Peace Corps 33 years ago. Because of his creativity, his idealism, his brilliance, the Peace Corps remains one of the most popular government initiatives ever undertaken. From the time he and his wife Eunice helped to organize a conference on juvenile delinquency for the Attorney General in 1947 to his efforts for public education in Chicago in the 1950s, to his leadership of Head Start and Legal Services, and now the Special Olympics, Sergeant Shriver has awakened millions of Americans, including many in this administration, to the responsibilities of service, the possibilities of change, and the sheer joy of making the effort. These recipients of the Presidential Medal of Freedom represent different political parties, different ideologies, different professions, indeed even different ages. There are different eras, different races, different generations in American history can not be permitted to obscure the fact of what they share in common. An unusually profound sense of responsibility to improve the lives of their fellow men and women, to improve the future for our children, to embody the best of what we mean by the term American citizen. By their remarkable records of service and by their incredible spirit, we have all been enriched. And now, I would ask the military aide to read the citations as I present the Medal of Freedom. Medal of Freedom citation to Herbert Block. Combining humor, satire, and an incisive wit, Herbert Block, better known by his pen name Herb Block, has endowed editorial pages with his skilled artistry for nearly half a century. His political cartoons continue to enliven the minds and tweak the sensibilities of millions of Americans. Usually selecting his targets from among the powerful of Washington, every president since Herbert Hoover has known the sting of Herb Block's pen. He instills in our nation's leaders a dose of humility reminding all of us that public service is a privilege. Medal of Freedom citation to Cesar E. Chavez, posthumously. With few material possessions, but guided by his parents' steady example, his Catholic faith, the lessons of Gandhi, and an unshakable belief in justice, Cesar Chavez brought about much needed change in our country. An agricultural worker himself since childhood, he possessed a deep personal understanding of the plight of migrant workers, and he labored all his years to lift their lives. As the leader of United Farm Workers of America, he faced formidable, often violent opposition with dignity and nonviolence, and he was victorious. Cesar Chavez left our world better than he found it, and his legacy inspires us still. <coughs> Thank you. 
Medal of Freedom Citation to Arthur Fleming. The highest attributes of government service are clearly evident in the brilliant career of Arthur Fleming, serving every president from Franklin Roosevelt to Ronald Reagan. He is a proven resource of astute intelligence and steadfast loyalty. On the first two Hoover commissions, he strove to renew and reinvigorate established principles of governmental power and responsibility. From his role as Secretary of Health, Education, and Welfare to his landmark efforts as Chairman of the Commission on Civil Rights, he consistently challenged the status quo. He not only sought health care reform, but he also summoned our nation to uphold its promise of equality. Arthur Fleming has selflessly labored for decades to make American government more effective and efficient. A grateful nation thanks him. Medal of Freedom Citation to James Grant. Recognizing that our children are our most important resource and most profound responsibility, James Grant has devoted his life to making the world a better place for its youth. He has proven to be a compassionate and visionary executive director at UNICEF, teaching us the disastrous effects of poverty, population growth, and environmental degradation upon the vulnerable and dispossessed children of our world. Under his leadership, UNICEF has fought to reduce disease, malnutrition, disability, and illiteracy on a global scale. His wise stewardship has pointed the way toward a future in which these adversities may no longer threaten our children. James Grant continues to create hope and opportunity where there was once only despair, earning our eternal gratitude and ensuring a brighter tomorrow for our world. Medal of Freedom Citation to Dorothy Irene Height. Dorothy Height has spent a lifetime providing leadership in the struggle to make the promise of equality a reality for people around the world. Beginning as a civil rights advocate in the 1930s, she soon gained prominence through her tireless efforts to promote interracial schooling, to register and educate voters, and to increase the visibility and status of women in our society. She has labored to provide hope for inner city children and their families, and she can claim responsibility for many of the advances made by women and African Americans over the course of this century. For helping our nation to more accurately reflect the noble principles on which it was founded, we honor Dorothy Height. Medal of Freedom Citation to Barbara Jordan. Teaching by deed as well as by word, Barbara Jordan has dramatically articulated an enduring standard of morality in American politics. Guided by an unshakable faith in the Constitution, she insists that it is the sacred duty of those who hold power to govern ethically and to preserve the rule of law. As the first African-American woman elected to the Texas State Senate, her conspicuous abilities led her to the United States Congress where her brilliant oratory and meticulous judgment earned our lasting respect. She continues her life's work as teacher, explaining and analyzing complex issues of moral responsibility in politics and imbuing the leaders of tomorrow with the ability to follow her formidable lead.
Medal of Freedom Citation to Joseph Lane Kirkland. Lane Kirkland is a hero of the modern labor movement, a man who has spent his life forging solidarity among the men and women whose sweat and toil have built our world. Ever resolute in his quest to enhance opportunities for working people, he has tirelessly worked to strengthen democracy and to further the cause of human rights. During the Cold War, his vital assistance to the solidarity movement in Poland spurred the forces of freedom toward victory in Eastern Europe. Just as his guidance here at home helped to renew and fortify the American economy, as a people, we are indebted to Lane Kirkland for his talented leadership efforts as an advocate for unity and social justice. Medal of Freedom Citation to Robert H. Michael. Demonstrating loyal devotion to our country, Bob Michael has worked ceaselessly to move our nation forward. After valiant Army service during World War II, he chose to serve his community and country in the Congress, earning the trust of his constituents election after election for nearly four decades. Raising his voice, sometimes in song, but always in the spirit of creative compromise and cooperation, he has won the enduring respect of his colleagues on Capitol Hill and of the nine presidents with whom he has served. He retires as House Minority Leader, leaving a history of legislative victories that often broke gridlock in times of crisis. America thanks him for demonstrating the highest standards of public service, putting the interest of the nation ahead of his own. Medal of Freedom Citation to Robert Sargent Shriver. Robert Sargent Shriver has not only shared, but shaped the action and passion of his times. It was Sarge Shriver's energy, persuasion, and leadership that made the goals of the Peace Corps attainable. That living reminder that the essence of American power is not might of arms, but constancy of ideals and perseverance of effort. That so much endures with his indelible stamp, both stuns and invigorates, Head Start, Vista, foster grandparents, legal services, the Job Corps, and more. He released a torrent of creative energy from Special Olympic athletes to Head Start students to National Service pioneers. Serve, 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 Sergeant Shriver told Americans, because in the end, it will be the servants who save us all. His service has been our legacy of hope. Ladies and gentlemen, in closing, let me say that I couldn't help thinking as the citations were read and I looked into the faces of our honorees and their families, friends, and admirers here, that we too often reserve our greatest accolades for our citizens when they are gone. I wish that Cesar Chavez could be here today. I am grateful that his wife is here, and I am so grateful that all these others are here. Let us remember today that the greatest gift any of us can give the founders of this Constitution and this Republic 
is to emulate the work of these citizens whom we honor today, every day, each in our own way. Thank you for being here. God bless you all. pictures taken with them and with the president and I think we're going to try to take all of the award winners out first and then we will group you according to the person you are here with and then there will be um, there will be food and drink and merriment <laughs> in the uh, in the dining room <laughs>